A function can be described as a rule or expression that takes some input, does a bit of work on it, and produces an output. Let's look at a very basic example of a function. Let's take f, or the function of x, is equal to x plus 2, where f is our function, x is our input, and the work that we are doing on x is we are adding 2 to it. As I just said, x is our input. We can also take numbers as our input. So for example, if we were to take f or the function of 2, that would be equal to 2 plus 2, giving us an answer or an output of 4. Similarly, we can say that f or the function of 5 is equal to 5 plus 2, which gives us an output of 7. So once again, we are taking 5 as our input. The work we are doing on 5 is we are adding 2 to it. And our output is 5 plus 2, or 7. One should note that on the O-level exam, and in general, functions can be written in a different notation. You may come across something that looks like this. x plus 2. This is read as f of x equals x plus 2. And it's essentially just saying the same thing, it's just written in slightly different notation. One should note that functions aren't always denoted in terms of f and x. So for example, over here, we can take the example of a function g of b is equal to b squared minus 2 over 3. So over here, b is our input. The work we are doing on b is we are squaring it, we are subtracting 2 from it, and we are then dividing the whole entire thing by 3. And once again, we can take different inputs for our function. So we can take g of, let's say, 3, for example, which will give us 3 squared minus 2 divided by 3. So once again, 3 is our input. We are squaring it, subtracting 2 from that, and dividing the whole thing by 3. So 3 squared is 9. So 9 minus 2 over 3 is equal to 7 over 3, which is our output. So one of the most important rules surrounding functions is that for each single input, a function produces only one output. That is, for each one number you put in, your function should only give you one answer. And that's proven true for all of our other examples. So for example, if we look here, we entered 2 as our input and got 4, only one number as our output. Here we entered 5 as our input and we got only one number, 7 as our output. So this is pretty self-explanatory, but just to make this concept a bit clearer, I'll give you a visual representation of it using graphs. So over here we have our y-axis. This is our x-axis, and let's draw the graph of y is equal to x, just a rough drawing. So if we look at this graph, if we want to determine whether or not this line can be called a function, then we need to see if for each single input, does our graph or does our function only produce one output? So over here, x are, is our input and our y values are our outputs. So if you look over here at one input or one x value, we only receive one output or one y value. And if we do that for any other point on the graph, the same is true. Let's look at another graph. Let's look at the graph of, say, y is equal to x squared. It's a terrible graph, but it doesn't matter. So here we have our curve of y is equal to x squared. So if we look at this graph, we see that for each single input value, we get only one output value. So let's say if this was this input value was 4, 
we will get only one output value, which is 16 or 4 squared. So both of these graphs, or both of these equations can be called functions. Let's look at a third example. Over here we have a graph of y is equal to the square root of x. If we look at this graph, for each individual input value that we enter, we don't only receive one output value, we receive multiple output values. So let's say if this input or this x value was 9, then we would have two possible output values of y is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 3. Now this isn't drawn to scale, it's just to give you a rough idea of what I'm trying to say. And we know that because negative 3 squared is the same thing as 3 squared and they both equal to 9. So this right here would not be called a function. That is it for this video.